Just after midnight, Duluth officers were dispatched to Gateway Towers Apartments after getting reports of a stabbing and hit-and-run crash. What followed was a dangerous encounter involving multiple victims and a suspect who fled the scene. Suspect living in another beer pool. I'm bleeding from a chest, dude. I feel like I should be released here. Okay. You have a right to defend myself okay. and you know it. I have a dude that is shining this guy in the face and his dog is barking at him and he's threatening him. Okay. Right outside Gateway Gate. on Michigan Street. Gateway. On Gateway, yes. And, and what's going on? Uh, this guy is wearing a black jacket and he's carrying a water and he's got a hat on and he's threatening a resident here. All right. He's, he's flashing a flashlight right in his face. All right, you said the Michigan Street side. We've already got a call. We'll get them over yes. there. Yes. Okay, please hurry. One 911 caller reported that a man had stabbed a woman and was attempting to flee the scene in his car. Another caller reported hearing one gunshot and seeing a victim on the ground. Multiple officers immediately responded. When officers arrived at Gateway Towers, they found a woman clutching her chest. She was bleeding profusely from a stab wound in her upper right chest. Despite the severity of her injury, she managed to tell officers, he stabbed me. Stabbed. Right here. Where? In your chest? Yeah. Okay. Come on, guys. Come on, guys. I can't. Keep some I can't. pressure on it, okay? He just got ran over. Come on, dude. Keep I some can't. pressure on it. Who stabbed you? I have an ambulance coming, miss. All right? I want you to know. Ask them they know. Okay. I don't know the dude, he lives here. Ask him! Okay, how many people I'm were in the car? I'm bleeding out of my chest, dude. I got an ambulance coming for you. It's just one dude. One guy. And he just hit him. Okay. I'm bleeding out of my chest. I don't I, got... I have an ambulance coming for you. Can you okay. take my dog and go up to my apartment, please? Put, put you, him in my apartment. I don't know. Oh dude, just stab me in my chest. If you could take the dog, I can help you with the wound. Yeah, I got it. Okay, can yeah. you get the dog yeah, inside? I can, I can. Yeah. I can't breathe right now. Hold on. Okay. Okay, yeah, sorry. Yeah, yeah. Nearby, officers found a man who told them that he and the other victim were a couple and lived in the apartment complex. Earlier that night, they'd been confronted by a man who refused to let them into the building, claiming they didn't live there. He stabbed my girl. I started chasing Wait, him. So when did, when did that happen, the stabbing? I, I didn't even know he did it until I seen it. She started screaming, and, uh, and so he started running away. Was, was that after you got hit by the car? This is, no, I got hit after he stabbed her because I'm like, get in the car leave dude and he got his car but he came at me it's time to block the door who is he um the guy that was in that car do you know him i do not he was trying to get in the building and this guy was flashing his flashlight in his face the guy that hit him the guy that hit him was the guy that hit him was flashing the light okay like through the front door He's trying to block the front door from him getting in. With his car or with his body? With his body. Okay. So then I pulled up and I stopped because I saw him he was going to go fight him. And I stopped I said, get off him, get off him, he lives here. And then he hit me with what, I don't know, but he hit me in the arm. Right here, as you can see, there's a bruise for me. Hit me in the arm to try to back me off. And I said, dude, he's riling his dog up. And then she chased him, he was trying to go to his car. He turned around and stabbed her in the chest. Okay. A witness described how she saw the altercation escalate as the suspect shined a flashlight in the victim's face. When she tried to intervene, the suspect struck her in the arm before fleeing the scene. Hello, this is uh, Corey Mullen. Uh, I live at the Gateway Tower, and two people just came in behind me, and I asked them not to come in behind me, and they threatened me and said, if you touch me, I don't, I don't know exactly what they meant, but it, it seems threatening. How do they threaten? I don't know who these two individuals are. I don't know their names. So how did, or they, even ask. How did they threaten you? He said, if you touch me, just remember that. Okay. That's what he said. He just came right in behind me. Didn't have a key fob, nothing like that. Got right in my face and told me that if I touched him or else, I better remember that. And where did they go then after they got into the building? They went into the elevator. Okay. Any idea where they went after that? Is it my job to follow them? No, I'm just, where are the police going to find them is the problem. 
is what I'm asking. Well, how am I supposed to know that? You want me to follow someone who no, just I, threatened I, me? I didn't ask you to do is that. Is that what you're saying? No, I'm asking you if you do That's kind of what you're saying. No, I, I did not ask you to follow them at all. I don't want you to do that. So, so how am I supposed to know where they're going? So then you just say, I don't know where they went, is all you had to say. Okay? All right. And can you give me a description of what these people look like? Were they male or female? How about you all check the cameras yourselves and find out? They may How about have, that? They may not have access to those cameras at this time of the day. So if well, they, maybe they need to get a warrant and check like. them then. Okay, well, by the time they get a warrant and check them, it's going to be tomorrow sometime if they can even get a warrant. But well, I don't give a f dude. That's your job. Okay, well. How about that? Fuck, dude. They were threatening you that you could give me a description. A short time later, officers spotted the suspect still in the vehicle and engaged in a pursuit, heading northbound on Interstate 35. The suspect's living in another vehicle. They were passing her in no help cabs. Of course, there's a significant behind that vehicle on the viaduct going so north on the 35. Hey, Lord. Yeah, there is a bystander pointing towards the viaduct. Where are you at, 4 7? Just getting on the 35, going into the hole. Ten four three five will be with four seven if people want to do this. Soon. Mister, have lights. Four seven two with a ten three to put a key near each hole. That means. It looks like an affirmative northbound I thirty five. Oh. Coming up to twenty first east in about a mile. We're going to see what's well, going on at the scene, but we'll knock it down. We just want to make sure. Female rig to the south side of Gateway. We got a female that is stabbed with a chest. Female that's in the car. 10 4. 10 4. Two six is almost with you guys. Come up through the tunnels. 10 4. Yeah, yeah, just before the exit to 21st. Hey! Get out of the car! Let me see your hands! Officers were able to successfully stop the vehicle and take the suspect into custody. At this time, law three is closed for the stabbing. Law three is closed. He was identified as 31 year old Corey James Moen. When officers arrested him, they found he was bleeding from a wound on his forehead. Inside the car, police found a bloodied knife and major damage to the windshield, which aligned with the victim's account of being struck. Moen initially refused to acknowledge his Miranda rights, but eventually waived them and offered a statement. I feel like I should be released here. Okay. After uh, having a medical see me here, and then you should let me go. Okay. I did my best. So you don't want me to just give you a ride to the hospital and then we can Excuse talk there? Can, can I speak without being interrupted, please? Absolutely. I apologize. I did my best to protect this. That's the best I could do. You couldn't find a towel or anything? Or? I'll double check again. I thought, the, I thought May would be here quicker. He said he acted in self-defense, that the victims had been aggressive and were trying to get in the building without keys. You're lying to me. I, I promise you, it might be in the call somewhere, but I'm in charge of you. I'm here to make sure you're you okay. I'm so lying, dude. So do you want to tell me what happened from your point of view? How we I was assaulted by three different people. Okay. The one guy had a uh, swinging weapon. Not exactly sure what it was. Okay. I kept asking him to please stop. Please stop. This can be over with. I don't want anything to do with you. Please leave me alone. 
I, I don't want to fight you. He kept coming at me. You're saying he was, he was blocking my car while attacking my car. He smashed my windshield in my face that caused cuts in my face. Okay. Do you really think I'm going to stop and let him continue? You have a right to defend myself, okay. and you know it. No, I have a right to defend myself. It's okay. the law. Yes, that I and do. if that's the case, then the charges will be dropped. There's nothing you can do tonight to change that. Why are they not arresting him when he assaulted me? Look at the stitches on my face. Right. There's also someone with a stab wound at another hospital. So if you want to puff your chest and so, get all so hypey, I'm just going to put you in cuffs. Why did you arrest the guy that assaulted me, huh? Okay. Or do you think that I did this to myself? Despite Moen's claims, the evidence quickly began to contradict his story. Investigators reviewed multiple angles of surveillance footage. They showed the moment Moen confronted one of the victims, shining a bright flashlight into his face. After an argument, the situation escalated, leading to the stabbing and hit and run. The footage confirmed that Moen had driven his vehicle straight into the victim, striking him and causing significant damage to the windshield, just as officers had observed at the scene. Corey James Moen was initially charged with two felony counts of second-degree assault with a dangerous weapon and misdemeanor fifth-degree assault. He pled not guilty in July 2023. In September 2023, a jury found him guilty of all three charges. In April 2024, Moen was sentenced to 18 months and 23 months in prison for each of the second-degree charges and 90 days for the fifth-degree charge, with credit for time he already served. His concurrent sentences amounted to a little over 15 months in prison. In Minnesota, most offenders serve two-thirds of their prison sentence in custody and the last third on supervised release. As of publication, the Department of Corrections says he's expected to be released on December 9, 2024.